Where will Corey LaJoy race at in 2025? Plus, we know what race Lee Diffie will finally make his NBC NASCAR debut at. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. I've decided that I would like to join the Olympics in 2028. I'm going to be far too old to do it, but after watching the 1500 meter, the 200, the 400, the 100, I've decided I would like to be an Olympic runner at this point. So keep dreaming, kids. You can always achieve your <laughs> dreams. But for now, I'll continue to talk about race cars on the internet, specifically talking about Corey LaJoy today and what his plans are for 2025. We, of course, know that he will not be back at Spire Motorsports next season. They've decided to go ahead and make a move. Is that move going to be a lateral move to a guy like Justin Haley? Are they going to try to go get somebody else? I don't know. Sounds like it's going to be Justin Haley. I don't necessarily know if that's an upgrade from where we're at now. He does, of course, have a NASCAR Cup Series win. He has multiple wins at NASCAR's top levels and their top three touring divisions. Corey LaJoy cannot say that. He does have top tens on non-drafting tracks as well. So there's also that in play for Justin Haley. But for Corey LaJoy, what is are his plans for 2025. Of course, speculated that maybe he ends up at Rick Ware Racing. Maybe he's going to go to the Xfinity Series. Well, from what I heard this week talking to a couple of people, it sounds like Corey LaJoy is headed down to the Truck Series in 2025. What team... Uh, that still is TBD. Uh, I know there's a few different rides out there that actually are going to be very competitive rides. I know um, a few teams, there's a couple Chevy teams, high profile race winning uh, or contending winning uh, teams in the Chevy camp that will have spaces available. So does he end up at one of those? Does he head over to a Thor sport? Maybe if they, you know, decide to make a driver change over there remains to be seen, but it does sound like he will be in equipment that is capable of winning races. And for Corey LaJoy, I think this is actually a good thing. Now, you never want to take two steps down in your career, right? It's like going from the majors down to double A. It's a move that you want to avoid at all costs, a bit like it's the plague. But for Corey, I do think this might actually be good for his career. We've seen John Hunter Nemechek do just this, where he went from having a mid-pack ride in the Cup Series with Front Row Motorsports, demoted himself down to uh, the Truck Series, racing for Kyle Busch Motorsports, did it uh, season there, and then he moves up to the uh, Xfinity Series, and then he moves back up to the Cup Series, and you can argue that he did all that work just to make a lateral move over to Legacy, but he at least went down and found his confidence in the Truck Series, the Xfinity Series, and now getting up to the Cup Series. And for Corey, I think that's exactly what he could do in this situation. Now, it has been well documented that Corey LaJoy does not have a top 10 on a non-drafting track in the NASCAR Cup Series. Myself, others have all documented it. It's unfortunate for Corey because he definitely has run well at times to get that. He just hasn't been able to close the deal. He has been able to do that on uh, plate races, super speedway, drafting tracks, whatever you want to refer to it as. But on non-drafting tracks, has not been able to accomplish that yet. Good news, though. He does have a top 10 finish on a non-drafting track in the NASCAR Truck Series, a 10th place finish back in 2014 when he was racing for Ricky Benton's team over at RBR. So he does have that monkey off his back already. We don't have to worry about talking about that going into it. He did make some select starts for Spire Motorsports in the Truck Series. Looked like he was in contention to win one of those races at Daytona um, and was leading pretty late into that race before getting shuffled out or caught him in a wreck. I can't remember what happened at the end of that race because all truck races at Daytona kind of just blend together at this point you just assume there was a big wreck that happened in it but he at least does have that top 10 finish already so for Corey I do think that this is going to be a good move if it does in fact play out how I've I've heard it I think that the for Corey it's a good thing it goes down there and he's going to be able to show what he can do I know he catches a lot of crap on the internet and I've definitely dealt out uh some of that some of that um that crap to him about not competing at the cup series level potentially not being good enough to be there Corey lajoy is a good race car driver he has just put himself in situations in the cup series where he's with underfunded teams he certainly doesn't have funding to buy himself a better ride he doesn't necessarily have the nepotism to make it work now granted his last name has certainly helped open doors for him i don't think there's any dispute about that but for Corey, i uh, he does a lot of talking for the equipment that he is in. And when I say that, I mean like the equipment just can't live up to the talk that he has he has put out there. And that's unfortunate because this is a guy that has gone head to head with Joey Logano and, and beat him. He's gone head to head with Kyle Larson. He looked he was in the same Arca East or Canon East at that time uh, season with Kyle Larson. He won multiple times. Same with Kyle Larson. So the guy knows how to win races. That's not a dispute here. He just hasn't been able to do it 
at NASCAR's, you know, top three series, the national touring series. And I think that's a huge monkey on it. It's like the Daniel Hemrick thing where Hemrick finally wins one race at NASCAR's national level, just also happens to win in a championship. And that maybe probably will likely be the only NASCAR win he gets in his career, barring some miracle happening at this point. So for Corey, I think going down to the truck series, getting in a competitive ride and winning races, contending for for wins, will put his name back out there. Show everybody like, oh yeah, this guy can drive when put in the right situation. And of course, you know, people will point out 2023 when he went over to Hendrick to sub for Chase Elliott at Gateway and just absolutely had nothing. I mean, even Alan Gustafson said like, dude, I got nothing for you. So he did all that talking to be like, if I ever get into Hendrick Motorsports equipment, we'll be able to run well gets in that equipment and Hendrick's like, we don't even care about this track. So we don't have anything for you, but which is, you know, unfortunate now they're going to have to have something because that's going to be a playoff race next year. But for Corey, does sound like he's headed to the truck series next year. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Once again, use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. I have a new bra- or Driven shirt on. I'm going to say BREAKHARD shirt. No, this is a Driven shirt. Use code BREAKHARD. Uh, I wear the sunglasses. Shane Van Gisbergen wears the sunglasses. Josh Berry, Ryan Priest, and maybe you can as well. So check out their website today. Moving on to the other topic of Thursday, Lee Diffie. We finally know when he will join the NBC NASCAR broadcast booth, he will start calling races at Daytona in a few weeks' time, replacing Rick Allen. He'll continue to call races through the remainder of the year, fully expect him to be back in 2025 as well. Rick Allen will move down to calling NASCAR Xfinity Series races. What Rick Allen's future is beyond 2024, that remains up in the air right now. But Nathan Brown over at the Indianapolis Star did confirm after months of rumors and speculation that Lee Diffie will, in fact, join the NASCAR booth at Daytona. He, of course, is currently in Paris, calling a number of events for NBC. He famously botched the men's 100 meter final call when he said that Jamaica won when it was actually Noah Lyles, but it was five one thousandths of a second. And maybe he shouldn't have called a winner, but it definitely looked like in the moment to the naked eye that Jamaica had won, but Noah Lyles did pick up that victory. And it's unfortunate that people were absolutely dragging him on the internet streets for making a small, simple mistake as if nobody else has ever done that in their lives. And not even an egregious one at that. It was a bang, bang call. And Lee Diffie is a consummate professional. His call at at the end of this year's Indianapolis 500 was absolutely spectacular. He knows when to let the moment breathe. His call in the 1500 meter just a couple of days ago at the Paris Olympics was absolutely incredible. The man is a consummate professional, like I said, and there's nothing... There's nothing shaky about him. He's going to do a great job, and I'm excited for him to call NASCAR Cup Series races because I think he brings a level of excitement to the booth that we currently don't have with most of our commentators, and I'm hoping that next year some of these booths are going to get revamped. Probably not Fox. I don't think they're going to do anything with their booth, but hopefully with Prime, with uh, uh, Max, TNT, whatever you want to, however you're going to watch that. And then uh, NBC, hopefully we get a revamp and some new voices in there would bring some excitement to the sport because the sport definitely deserves a better broadcast than what is currently being given in the first half of the season. And NBC's done a good job, right? But I think there's only so much of Jeff Burton and Steve LaTarte we can take in one broadcast. But having Lee Diffie come, I think, is a breath of fresh air. It's going to be a new voice for everybody to pay attention to. Are you going to be sick of him by Phoenix? Yeah, maybe. Who knows at this point? Some people will be sick of him at Daytona because he's definitely going to say Daytona because he's just from Australia and he has an accent and that's just what happens. But, and that's 100% going to be something that people are going to complain about as well. This is an American sport and Americans should be calling it. Guarantee you people will be saying that on the internet as if Jackie Stewart and David Hobbs have not called F1 or NASCAR races before. But I digress. We're not getting into into the patriotism of whether or not our broadcasters, uh, how they need to sound. If they do a good job, they bring excitement. That's all I really care about at this point. So for Lee Diffie, Daytona is when he will take over NASCAR Cup Series broadcasting duties. I'm excited to hear it. Let me know in the comments what you think about Corey LaJoy's future, as well as Lee Diffie officially joining the NASCAR broadcast starting at Daytona. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.